All right, welcome back. If you've been following along, we now have audio. We've got jump sounds, music, and the ability to get killed by a dragon. But right now, we don't have a way to kill our dragon, so that's what we're going to add next. We're going to set up some fireballs. We're going to set up shooting fireballs and kill dragons. Yeah, that's pretty much it. So to get started, we're going to need a fireball visual. Now there are a bunch of different ways that we can do this. I'm not going to provide one because I want you to go find one on your own, but we can look in a couple different places. The one that I'll use is from Open Game Art. I'm going to take this HQ fireball, this high quality one, mostly because it's tilted and I want to show how you can adjust it. But you can also just hop on to Google and find any PNG or just transparent image on there and use that as your fireball as well. So if you're on Google, if you're not sure how to do that, by the way, just go to images.google.com and uh, start typing like fireball sprite. And you should see a bunch of sprites appear. And then you want to make sure that you pick transparent and then look for things that are not animated and that are not um, sprite sheets. Things where there's a single one if you want to find something like this on here. Like I said, though, I'm going to go to the open game art one, this HQ Fireball, and download it. You can see I've actually downloaded it right here already. So we're going to pull this into the project. I'll just move this over and I will drag it from there right onto, oh, let's just drop it into the assets folder first. So we've got the fireball in here. Now I'm going to take this fireball and I'm going to move this into the art folder. In fact, we have two audio files. Let's create an audio folder. Just create a folder here. Call it audio. Whoops, I didn't do that right. Let's try that one more time. Create folder and type the word audio. And then we'll just take both of these files and drag them one at a time into that audio folder just to clean things up a little bit. So now if I go back to art, I've got my fireball that we created. Let's drop this into the scene. Oh, that's pretty big. Not exactly what we want. So let's shrink it way down. Again, I'll hold shift, grab that, and just shrink it down to a good size. And maybe I'll grab it without holding shift and move it up here, get it kind of in front of the dragon to get a good idea of the scale. I'm going to go a tiny little bit smaller. Now I want to fix the rotation because I want my fireballs to fly off that way. So I'll hit the rotate tool, which is just E on the keyboard, by the way, to switch to this rotate tool and grab the blue line here and just twist it until it looks right. Let's see, right about there, because he's gonna be shooting these fireballs out. And again, it's not the coolest looking fireball. You could come up with all kinds of stuff. So if you want something cooler, go for it. But I wanna show how this is gonna work with this um, mo slightly modified sprite because we need to rotate it here. Now we could also rotate this in the image, but I wanna show that you can do it here as well. So we've got a fireball. And our fireball needs to do something, right? It needs to move to the right and kill dragons. I guess that's pretty much it, right? It kills dragons and moves to the right. So let's set it up. First thing we need is a script. And we're going to create a new script. So go to the scripts folder, right click, and hit create. Go to C sharp script. And we'll just call this fireball. We'll open that up in our code editor. And notice how it didn't open. When I enter, hit enter, it opened up the jump file. There are a couple options here. I can either hit control comma and go search for it, search for um, the class that I had just written, or I can just come back in and just double click again and it usually works. That's generally what I do. If it goes into Visual Studio and doesn't open the right file, I'll just go back, double click it, and it will find it. What's happening is that the project hasn't updated, so it doesn't know that file is there yet when you click it the first time and you're just a little bit too fast. But if it's had time to recompile and update the project, then this will show up and it'll work. So usually the second time around works fine. Now to move our fireball, we want to do it a little bit differently than our move left script because we want this thing to have a rigid body and handle some actual collisions. So what we're going to do is get the rigid body component. We'll say get component rigid body 2D. And we'll set the velocity. So we do the open close parentheses and the dot. And then we'll do velocity or just hit V equals. And we want to give it a default starting velocity. So I'll just call this starting velocity. And I'm going to capitalize the S and the V. And then I'll hit, let's see, it is control period. If it's selected, control period, and then choose generate field, and it should give me a vector two for a starting velocity. I'm gonna make this public just so I can modify it in the inspector. We could also alternatively add a special attribute, but we'll just make it public for now. So this will set our velocity to the starting velocity. Now we can control this in the editor. So I'll save this off, and we're gonna go back to the editor. We're gonna go find our fireball, 
and we'll add the fireball script to it. Let's see, let's try adding that on. There we go. But this isn't gonna work yet because it needs our rigid body 2D script as well. So we're also going to add a component. We'll start typing R-I-G-I -I and find the rigid body 2D. The final thing that this needs too for collisions is gonna be that polygon collider. So let's just collapse these down for a second and search for a polygon collider 2D and add that as well. So now we've got all three. Remember, we don't see the outline though until this is expanded. So that's why it's not green and then it turns green. And it's also not a great collider, but it's fine for our purposes here. So there we go. We've got a fireball script. We've got a rigid body. We've got a polygon collider. We do need to set a starting velocity though. I'm gonna set this to like eight on X. So it'll move to the right at about eight meters a second. We'll hit play. And let's watch what that fireball does. Close, so we want the fireballs to shoot out, but we probably don't want them to drop down like that. Now to stop them from dropping, we'll go select this fireball again and expand out this constraints section. If it's collapsed, just expand it. And we wanna freeze the rotation because we don't want this thing spinning. And we wanna freeze the Y position because we don't want it going up and down. So if I check both of those and come back in and hit play, my fireball should go straight and look at that, it smacks into the enemy dragon. It doesn't kill him yet, but it does hit him and we're getting there. So next up, we need a script for our enemies. I've created an empty enemy script. Oh no, I've actually, here, I'm gonna delete it and we're gonna recreate this. So we'll create a new script. Just right click down here, hit create and choose C sharp script. We'll name it enemy. And then let's open that up. Visual Studio keeps wanting to open up the other script. There we go, let's get the enemy script open. So the enemy is gonna do two things. It's not gonna do anything for start and update. So I'm gonna select all of those and delete it. We're gonna get this nice and short. The enemy script is gonna be responsible for the lifetime of the enemy. It's gonna handle killing the enemy and bringing them back to life when we wanna reuse them. So we're gonna make a method on here called die. We'll say public, which means that we can call this method from other classes. Void, which just means that it doesn't return anything. It doesn't give us back a true or false or any other value. We just do it and it does its stuff. And the method is gonna be called die, D-I-E with a capital D because that follows the standards. Then we add an open and close parentheses, shift nine, shift zero, a new line and the squiggly brace, just shift in the key next to P. And in here, we want to turn off the renderer and the collider. So we're gonna say get component and we'll call a sprite renderer in here just like that. We add the open close parentheses, so just shift nine, shift zero, period. Then do dot enabled equals false. That's gonna turn off the sprite renderer so it stops showing. Now I'm gonna copy this line. So I hold shift, I hit the home key, that's uh, above the arrow keys on most keyboards, it goes to the beginning, and then I hit control C. Then I hit end and enter and control V. So I just quickly duplicate a line, just really fast do it out of habit much faster than that normally. Then I'll double click on the word sprite renderer to just select it and I'm gonna put in collider. Notice that I didn't have to put in collider 2D but I'm gonna put collider 2D instead actually. Let's do collider 2D. That's the base class for our 2D colliders. It means that if we have a polygon collider 2D or a box collider 2D or a sphere collider 2D it'll find it no matter what and we can turn off whatever type of 2D collider we can just turn it off with this line of code. So that kills our enemy or turns them off. Now I'm gonna copy this die method, watch this. Copy, control C with both of those, or all of that selected. I'll go down two lines, control V to paste. And I'm gonna call this respawn. So double click on the word die, change that to respawn, and I'm gonna change both of these falses to true. Now what we've done is make a method that, oops, not two, true. There we go, we've made a method that turns off the renderer and the collider, so it'll stop showing up and stop hitting things. And we have another method that turns them back on. I'll save this off. In fact, let's get rid of these extra two unused using statements and that extra space there. Get this nice and small. And then we need to go into our fireball script. So in our fireball, we want to handle a collision. So to do that, we'll, well, first let's get rid of this update section. So I'm gonna select 14 through 19 and get rid of those. Again, when you delete, make sure that your squiggly braces still line up so that we still have an ending one for this open one on fireball and an ending one for start. And this is why the tabbing really helps. So if your things are unformatted or they're tabbed in by the way, like maybe it looks like this and it's all weird and wonky, just hold down control, hit K, keep holding control and hit C. Oops, no, 
KD. Hold down control and hit K, then hold down control and hit D, and that will reformat your document. KC is the comment one. So here we go. We've got this slightly shortened up script, and we're going to add on collision enter. So say on collision enter. Make sure you select the 2D. I've selected the wrong one a million times. And here, when our fireball hits anything, remember it can only hit dragons, we want to kill them. So we'll say collision dot get our uh, collider that gets us the collider that we hit dot get component enemy and I'll do open close parentheses and a semicolon so this is going to get it but I want to assign that to a variable so I'm going to say var enemy equals that so what we're doing now is finding the enemy that hit and assigning it to this enemy variable now if the enemy does not exist or we hit something that maybe doesn't have an enemy script on it and our collisions aren't right this enemy is going to be null. It just means that it doesn't exist. It's not there. We can't do anything with it. So normally, if we just tried to call something on it, like we said, enemy dot die, this would work great unless there's an issue with the enemy. Maybe the enemy is missing, like I said, or it's been destroyed, or we hit something that we weren't anticipating. So what we can do to avoid getting an exception or an error here is add a question mark right here, right before the period, this little... Elvis operator, or I forget the official name of it now. But what it does essentially is it checks to see if the enemy exists, and only if it exists will it call die. Without the question mark, it'll try to call it no matter what, and it'll blow up. With the question mark, it's essentially adding a check to make sure the enemy is there before trying to call die on it. So there we go. We've got an enemy die. Now we need to go to move left. In move left, um, well, this is wrong. I actually have a bad line of code here. What we want to do in move left is in our update, when we reset our character, we want to reset the enemy. And I've actually cached it here. Let's just remove that because I want to show you the steps for this. So what we need to do is cache our enemy. And I'm going to do that. We can do that on enable or we can just do that in awake. Normally when we cache these things, we use an awake method. So I'm going to add two lines here. Just type the word awake or AWA and hit enter and let it auto complete for me. And I'm going to say enemy equals get component enemy. Now go to the beginning and hit control period and generate a field for it. Is it gonna let me? It does not wanna let me, oh, there we go. Generate variable and I'll choose generate field. No, let's not generate it, cause watch, we can just type it up here too. I just wanna show this. So I'll type private enemy enemy. So in our awake, which just calls right at the start, we're gonna cache that enemy component right here. Then when we do our update, when we're checking to see if we should reset right here, and we do our resetting right here, we want to just reset that enemy. So I'll add a new line after show randoms, right? And say enemy question mark dot reset re or respawn. Sorry, not reset. And then the open close parentheses with shift nine, shift zero, and a semicolon. Now, why do we need this? Because this is also on our walls. Our walls do not have enemies, and this enemy would be null and give us an error. Now, we could also split things up a little bit better. We could change things around and make the move left script not know about enemies. But we're doing some very basic stuff, and we want to keep it as simple as possible. So we're not going to complicate it much more. So we'll save this off, and we'll go back over to our code. And let's hit play. So watch the magic in action. Let's see what happens. So we should see our dragon gets hit, and oh, it still didn't work. Stop playing, and let's go see the very obvious reason, the thing that happens all the time. We've created a script, we've written the script, we've tested it, checked that it, it all looks good, and not added it to the game object. So I'm going to go over here to the dragon and add that enemy script. But notice that we didn't get any errors because our code is checking to make sure that we have the enemy before we try to do anything with it. So there we go. The enemy goes. He dies. Look, he's still moving, though. See that? Why is he still moving? So he can come back. In fact, let's zoom out. Let's uh, zoom this view out, and if I can balance, just watch what happens to that dragon. Ah, there we go. So he dies. He's going to respawn, come right back. He's come back. So he's not actually disappearing, right? He's flying across all the way around and then just resetting and reappearing when he gets back to the end. So he's still doing the full movement so that we don't adjust our spawn rates or our difficulty by killing him too fast. They still go all the way to the end and then, then do the reset. So we've got now a dragon that we can shoot. Um, we've got fireballs that fly out of our mouth. It's now time to turn it into multiple fireballs and multiple dragons. But we'll do that in the next section. So get this part working.
get your fireball figured out, pick out the perfect fireball for your, your visuals. Make sure that you've lined it up right and it's hitting the enemies. When you're done with that, come over to the next section. We're gonna set it up so we can shoot a bunch of fireballs, have a bunch of enemies and make things get a little bit wild. Oh, and don't forget, share this stuff. Hit like, all that other cool stuff.